Good morning, everyone. I hope you appreciate the fact that um, on this very special day, on this very special day, which is the day of Pentecost, that the band is playing some songs and prayers that actually illustrate the distinctive of the Salvation Army, our belief in full salvation and the infilling and fullness of the Holy Spirit. And that marks out the Salvation Army as a whole in this movement, which makes us distinctive. And so the band will play some of these songs, which include some beautiful prayers. And I'm sure they reflect the prayers of our heart this morning as we, we've listened to so much yak during the week. And now is an opportunity just to still our hearts and, and be mindful of those around us who actually would appreciate some stillness as well. So thank you for coming early, nine o'clock, so you can talk and share great fellowship together. But let's enjoy these lovely songs. Thank you. 
Welcome all. We'll have another go at that later on. Okay, where's my song? Send the fire. Well, what's today? Pentecost Sunday. Hallelujah. Well, that's good. I wrote something down about Pentecost Sunday just in case I couldn't remember it all. Today is when we celebrate the blessing of the Holy Spirit upon the disciples who were to be the foundation of the Christian church representing the body of Christ within the world. And in my devotions this morning from the Salvation Army's Words of Life, the Bible day by day, it said this, the message of Pentecost is not simply God with you, it is God in you. Amen. That was not a bad amen. Uh, let me see. Uh, it's not simply God with you, it is God in you. Amen. Wow. And that's based on Philippians. Philippians 2, 13, where Paul wrote, For it is God who works in you to will and to act in order to fulfil his good purpose. Well, that was a rousing song for us to start with. And it's song 326. And it's up on the screen. And we're going to be upstanding as we sing. All the verses. I'll let you know how many that is eventually. Okay. I think it's four. Okay, four verses and off we go. With an intro. The Christ of burning plants and flames Send the fire Thy blood was give today we play Send the fire today Look down and see this waiting host Give us the promise holy for the announcements please brother John
And my beautiful wife. Well, I haven't had anyone come to me this morning and say they were specifically new or coming back. So if you are new and you are coming back to visit, welcome. It's something that we look forward to every Sunday of having new members or members coming back that, uh, that are visiting us. So uh, all feel welcome. <coughs> now, you would have seen here on a Sunday over on my left here, Phil. Phil plays the trombone. Do you remember Phil? Yes. Yeah? Well, he's sadly down in Melbourne. His sister passed away. So he's gone down there to be with family and uh, we pray for him that everything will work out fine down there and we support his family. Now also, Beryl Morley. Now those of you who are in, in the church here would uh, remember Beryl. Beryl has passed away as, as well. And we're having Beryl's funeral service here this coming Thursday at 11am. So if you feel as though you, <clears throat> you knew Beryl, and you would love, or even if you don't know Beryl, as a uh, Salvation Army member, feel free to turn up on Thursday at 11 o'clock here at the Citadel and we will have, um, have Beryl's uh, uh, funeral service here. John Tatters will be officiating at the funeral service. John, is a, he knows the family well, so he will be officiating, which means that there will be no Bible study on that, uh, that particular day. <clears throat> And also, welcome Keith and Ruth. They're conducting our meeting this morning. Always great to have you. Yeah. Red Shield Appeal. Now, that's most... I heard the ad on the radio or whatever on TV the other day, and I thought, the words they were saying to us, it's extremely important that we, we support the Red Shield Appeal. Now, we've seen the world as it is in the last year and a half or whatever, if there was ever a time the Salvation Army needed the Red Shield Appeal to be very, very successful is this year because it's one of those things that people can support. They can lash out with their money and say, this is going to a good cause. So the Red Shield Appeal has been operating so far and it will be also on again this weekend. So you'll find around different shopping centres the Red Shield uh, people there. Sam, my grandson, and I will be at North Lakes, so you can come and give us any amount of money you like, all right? <laughs> <clears throat> so far, the Salvation Army Red Shield Appeal for us here has uh, collected $3,549.15. I want to meet the person that gave the 15 cents, because I reckon he can give more. <laughs> Next Sunday, the 30th of, of um, uh, May, it's Red Shield Sunday. So what we're doing is we're having an early service here in the church, 9 a.m. So if you turn up at 10 a.m., we won't be here. We'll be off somewhere else. So 9 a.m. It'll be a short service. And Ivan Lang will be um, officiating at that service. And he's going to talk to us about the Holy Spirit. So it's an important part of the, our, our Bible to, uh, to talk about the Holy Spirit. And Ivan will be uh, conducting that uh, meeting for us. Now, another thing that, that, just briefly, just briefly, Keith, um, <clears throat> is um, I've had over uh, the months past where I've had people come up to me and say, well, look, we're just visiting or we're, we're, we're wanting to be part of the church, but we're just testing the water. But they don't see any evidence of where they can donate money. So what I'd like, if you're new here today or visiting, we can't do the normal thing which COVID knocked out. So up the front of the church, or back of the church, whichever way you look at it, we have the Salvation Army bucket there. So if you feel inclined to donate money, feel free to do that because it always goes to a good cause. So I thought I'd mention that because I've had quite a few people say to me, where do I donate the money? So that's an important issue. Thank you very much. Homeless person you can see on the streets, there are 13 more you can't. It's an alarming statistic, and when you peel it back, we are talking about people. Everyday people, young and old. It often starts with loss. Your job, your health, a relationship or a loved one. Next, you lose your home. 
Today, many Australians find themselves alone for the first time. When I became homeless with my child, I asked myself, what had I done in my life for this to happen? I'd worked hard. I was a nice person. And suddenly I'm facing living on the street. My boss called me and told me that I was not needed anymore. Oh, I lost hope. I felt I had no worth. Who would miss me? Everything was stolen from me. My identity along with my life savings. I feel violated. I've got absolutely nothing left. Absolutely nothing. My role at the Salvation Army is to work with people who are homeless. But there is never a typical day. Everyone has a unique story and there's no cookie cutter way of meeting their needs. People need to know that their story matters, that they matter, and that the Salvos will stand by them with the support of the community. A lot of these people, for them, particularly with the pandemic, this is the first time they're accessing services. Making that first step out to ask for help is a big deal, particularly when you've been self-sufficient for so long. I get it. When adversity hits and you, don't, you sort of don't know what to do and you don't really want to do anything, you just want to curl up in a ball and just hide from the world. And they don't deserve my second best. They don't deserve my leftovers. You might be saying one thing to them and that, that could change. That could change their life. These essential programs and others like them operate nationwide in the cities, the town and the bush to ensure the Salvation Army can provide a local response in nearly every community. From recovery to housing, natural disasters to pandemics, the Salvos help Aussies across so many different needs. The Salvation Army put their faith in me. They gave me an opportunity. I feel very, very blessed. The way the Salvos have supported me, that's hope. That's humanity in its purest form. The Salvation Army has been 110% helpful toward me, putting a roof over my head. Just the whole fact that they're there to help people, it's just amazing. In these uncertain times, the Salvation Army is here to help those experiencing hardship and injustice. And we will be for as long as it takes. Thank you for standing with us through the tough times. Thank you for giving, for caring and committing to support Australians in crisis. Whether it's the people you can see or the many more you can't, please know that your support ensures the Salvation Army can continue to serve vulnerable people in our community when they need us most. Together, we can leave no one in need. Please join John in a clap. Uh, next Sunday, for the first time in the Just Brass's history, We'll be playing down at the Red, uh, Redcliffe Markets from 8 o'clock till 2 p.m. Um, we are allowed to have a break, um, and we'll be playing probably for 10 or 15 minutes and then having a break for five minutes or so. And then, uh, and if any of the, the band who aren't tutors would like to come in and be substitutes, I reckon by the time we get to 12 o'clock, we'll be ready for a couple of extra corner players. Um, so we'll be able to collect for the Red Shielder Bill at the markets next week. And it's the first time the, uh, the Just Browse kids have been out together and played in, playing in the community. We know 20 songs. After that, we're starting again, and we hope everybody's gone by the time <laughs> we start again. So, uh, so that's just a, a little bit about Just Browse. And uh, pray for the youngsters who are a bit nervous, and some of the, us older ones who are a bit nervous. And, uh, we're looking forward to, uh, to taking part in that way next week. And now Elijah is going to come up on the screen and we'll see what's going to happen about Elijah. Aha. King Ahab and, and his evil queen Jezebel have kids. led Israel astray by worshipping other gods. The land is gripped by a terrible drought. While the prophets of God have been under siege by Jezebel's orders to kill them, the worship of Baal has flourished. Elijah. God's prophet demands to see Ahab. Ahab went to meet Elijah, and when he saw him, Ahab shouted, There you are, the biggest troublemaker in Israel! Elijah answered, You're the troublemaker, not me. You and your family have disobeyed the Lord's commands by worshipping Baal. 
call together everyone from Israel and have them meet me on Mount Carmel. Be sure to bring along the 450 prophets of Baal and the 400 prophets of Asherah who eat at Jezebel's table. Ahab got everyone together. Then they went to meet Elijah on Mount Carmel. Elijah stood in front of them and said, How much longer will you try to have things both ways? If the Lord is God, worship him. But if Baal is God, worship him. The people did not say a word. Then Elijah continued, I am the Lord's only prophet, but Baal has 450 prophets. Bring us two bulls. Baal's prophets can take one of them, kill it, and cut it into pieces. Then they can put the meat on the wood without lighting the fire. I will do the same thing with the other bull, and I won't light a fire under it either. The prophets of Baal will pray to their God, and I will pray to the Lord. The one who answers by starting the fire is God. That's a good idea, everyone agreed. Elijah said to Baal's prophets, there are more of you, so you go first. Pick out a bull and get it ready, but don't light the fire. Then pray to your God. They chose their bull. Then they got it ready and prayed to Baal all morning, asking him to start the fire. They danced around the altar and shouted, Answer us, Baal! But there was no answer. At noon, Elijah began making fun of them. Pray louder! He said, Baal must be a god. Maybe he's daydreaming or, or using the toilet or, or traveling somewhere. Or maybe he's asleep and you have to wake him up. The prophets kept shouting louder and louder and they cut themselves with swords and knives until they were bleeding. This was the way they worshipped and they kept it up all afternoon. But there was no answer of any kind. Elijah told everyone to gather around him while he repaired the Lord's altar. Then he used 12 stones to build an altar in honor of the Lord. Each stone stood for one of the tribes of Israel, which was the name the Lord had given to their ancestor, Jacob. Elijah dug a ditch around the altar, large enough to hold about 13 quarts. He placed the wood on the altar. Then they cut the bull into pieces and laid the meat on the wood. He told the people, Fill four large jars with water and pour it over the meat and the wood. After they did this, he told them to do it two more times. They did exactly as he said, until finally the water ran down the altar and filled the ditch. When it was time for the evening sacrifice, Elijah prayed, Our Lord, you are the God of Abraham, Isaac and Israel. Now prove that you are the God of this nation and that I, your servant, have done this at your command. Please answer me so that these people will know that you are the Lord God and that you will turn their hearts back to you. The Lord immediately sent fire and it burned up the sacrifice, the wood and the stones. It scorched the ground everywhere around the altar and dried up every drop of water in the ditch. When the crowd saw what had happened, they all bowed down and shouted, The Lord is God! The Lord is God! Just then, Elijah said, Grab the prophets of Baal! Don't let any of them get away! So the people captured the prophets and took them to the Kishon River, where Elijah killed every one of them. I never pictured Elijah just quite like that. But there you go. There's another way of looking at it. And, uh, and now the young people can go out for kids' church. We're going to sing a chorus, a song. Uh, well, it used to be a chorus, but we call it a song now. It's to be like Jesus. This hope possesses me. In every thought and deed, this is my aim, my creed, to be like Jesus. Let's have, uh, let's sing this, shall we? In the attitude of prayer. To be like Jesus, this hope possesses me.
Father God, we come together on this very significant day of Pentecost and we think of your amazing power and we are so grateful for that. We are so grateful that we can strive to be like you and you give us the power to do that. We pray this morning that you will inspire us to be like you and that you will challenge us to be like you. And we think of people all around the world who on this day will be praising you and thanking you for your Holy Spirit. We think of those who will not be able to do that. We think of many countries in this world where significant events are taking place that are not good. And we ask that the power of your Holy Spirit will move in a mighty way throughout our world. We pray for the Middle East and for the ceasefire there. We pray that that will continue to strengthen. We pray for those in countries where thousands are dying on a daily basis. We pray for your miraculous work to be seen and evidenced there. Thank you, God, for everything you have given to us and help us to give back more. Let us pray together the family prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. We're going to have a reading from God's word from selected verses from Genesis, starting with Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. God saw that the light was good and he separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day and the darkness he called night. And there was evening and there was morning, the first day. Thus, the heavens and the earth were completed in all their vast array. By the seventh day, God had finished the work he had been doing, so on the seventh day he rested from all his work. And God blessed the seventh day and made it holy, because on it he rested from all the work he had done of creating, sorry, from all the work of creating that he had done. This is the account of the heavens and the earth when they were created when the Lord God made the earth and the heavens. Amen. We're going to sing another song. And for those that uh, are over 21 and been in the Salvation Army for years, you would have remembered uh, uh, the musical the Spirit and how John Gowns and John Larson's wrote uh, and put together that great musical. And I was never in it. I was in college at the time. And uh, 
and we're going to uh, sing this great song, Who Is It Tells Me What To Do and Helps Me To Obey? Who Is It Plans The Route For Me and Will Not Let Me Stray? Who Is It Tells Me When To Speak and What I Ought To Say? You can uh, see... What's the next line say? Ah, there you go. That's what it is. So let's be upstanding, shall we? As we, uh, we sing the uh, three verses straight the way through. And thanks, Bandmaster. Off we go. <laughs> Who's it tells me what to do and helps me to obey? Who's it plans a route for me and will not let me stray? Who's it tells me when to speak and what I ought to say? That's the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, that's the Spirit. today is a lovely piece of music written by John Gowans as well and it says at the moment of my weakness when my need for power is plain and it tells a story so you can't just play one verse or two verses because I'd like you to follow through with the, uh, the words that the band uh, tune is going to play and I pray that it'll be a blessing to you.
I'm going to read the scriptures this morning from John chapter 20, verses 16 to 23. Um, I'm starting partway through Jesus appearing uh, to Mary after his resurrection. So Jesus said to her, Mary, and she turned toward him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. And Jesus said, Do not hold on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to the Father and your Father, to my God and your God. And Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news. I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. To them and said that he had said, sorry. Yes. On the evening of the first day of the week, when the disciples were together with the doors locked in fear of of the Jew, Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and sighed. And the disciples were overjoyed and they, when they saw the Lord. Again, Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, their sins are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, then they are not forgiven. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for the truth and the testimony of your word. We thank you, Jesus, that you became flesh and dwelt among us, dying for our sins. And we thank you, Holy Spirit, for coming, not only into this world, but into our lives. We thank you for the way that you bring life to God's word and how you reveal truth and remind us of his promises. And we welcome you again this morning. We pray for you to bring understanding to the word of God, to our hearts and our minds. We pray for your anointing to be upon Ruth as she shares what you have inspired. And we ask that you would come in power. We pray for your power in our lives that we might be changed in our hearts and in our minds to be more like Christ. To be greater witnesses in this world of who you are and to know you. To know your love, your grace, your joy and your sovereignty. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Acts chapter 2, verses 1 to 4. When the day of Pentecost came, all the believers were gathered together in one place. Suddenly there was a noise from the sky which sounded like a strong wind blowing and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then they saw what looked like tongues of fire which spread out and touched each person there. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to talk in other languages as the Spirit enabled them to speak. So today we celebrate that day called Pentecost Sunday and all around the world people wear red in churches. Church leaders wear red and a lot of people who go to church wear red. So I'm wearing red to celebrate. You could have too but I didn't ask you to. So, But on the, um, the day of Pentecost was not a new thing. The day of Pentecost had been around for a long time and it was actually to celebrate 50 days from when the children of Israel got out of Egypt to when they got the Ten Commandments. So it was a big celebration. And, and when the day of Pentecost was celebrated, 
all the males had to go to Jerusalem. So there would have been a lot of Jewish people there at the time. So this was a day where there was a lot of people celebrating something that God had done. And the Holy Spirit came in a new way to the disciples and the people who were gathered there. The Holy Spirit was not the first time the Holy Spirit had turned up either. We read from Genesis where it says the Spirit of God moved across or moved or hovered over the waters. We cannot imagine what the world was like right back there at the beginning. We can't imagine if there was before the world. Well, there was because it was formless. It was chaotic. It was dark. It would have been the most weirdest, horrible thing. But it says the Spirit of God hovered over the waters and then God breathed and the world was created. Now, God doesn't breathe, of course, because he's not a person, but we can't comprehend any other way. So, so in our minds, God breathed and the world became a place. There was day and night, moon, sun, trees, birds, animals, and then people. And God looked at it and it was good. And the Holy Spirit... And the Greek word for the Holy Spirit in that way is power and wind was part of that creation. So the Holy Spirit was with God when chaos became order and a thing of beauty. And the Holy Spirit continued throughout the Old Testament to touch people's lives. And we saw that story of Elijah where it seemed like the whole world of God's people, the Israelites, it seemed like all of them had turned to idols, had turned away from God. And the king and the queen were evil people who led the people away from God. And here comes Elijah who was God's person and the word of God tells us that the power of God, the Holy Spirit, rested on Elijah, And he called the people together, which was a brave act because Ahab and the queen were insistent on getting rid of, killing all the prophets of God. And Elijah says, I'm the only one left. And he calls on God to demonstrate his power, to demonstrate that he is God. And God responded to that in that amazing way where the fire came down and it burnt the rocks but it didn't burn the people around them. And then I love the next bit, which wasn't on the clip this morning, where Elijah says, because there'd been a drought, there hadn't been rain for years, and the crops were all gone, and all that, we know what a drought is here in Australia. And Elijah said to the king, watch out, there's rain coming. And the sky was blue, there was not a sign of rain. And Elijah says to his servant, Go and look towards the sea and see if there's a cloud. And the servant comes back, nothing. The sky's blue, there's nothing. Seven times Elijah sent his servant back and said, go and have a look and see if there's a cloud. And the seventh time the servant comes back, and this is one of my favourite verses in the Bible, and he said, I see a cloud the size of a man's fist. Now if you look at your fist, that's not big, is it? Well, even a man's fist, a bit bigger than mine, but it's not big. And if you were just out for a walk and you looked over the horizon over the water and you saw a cloud that big, would you think it's going to rain? No. But the power of God, the Holy Spirit was on Elijah and he was in touch with God and God's spirit was on him and he said, right, Ahab, get going because it's going to rain. And before long, it was pelting down. And Elijah picked up his robes and ran, and he beat the chariot because God's power was on him. And that's the faith of a man filled with God's spirit when he said, there's a cloud the size of a man's fist. And Elijah said, here it comes. Because the spirit of God was on him. 
There's another man in the um, Judges, in the Old Testament, chapters 13 to 16, Samson. And we know the story of Samson. And the Bible tells us that God, he was God's man. And God's spirit rested on Samson. And he was to work for God and get rid of the Philistines and all that kind of stuff. But he had long hair. You know the story. And they said, don't cut his hair because if you cut his hair, that's it. His strength is gone. So Samson worked for God and Samson was God's man. But he got a bit full of himself. And he really liked the women and that was his downfall. And so he said to Deliah, well, I'm good until you cut my hair. And the Bible, and I think this is one of the saddest verses in the Bible. In Judges chapter 16, verse 20, where Samson, it says, Samson didn't know that the Spirit of God had departed from him. Samson didn't know that the Spirit of God had departed from him. He had wandered away into his own way and the Spirit left him. But now we come to the New Testament and the disciples have been through the crucifixion. They've seen Jesus crucified and their world became chaotic. They didn't know what was happening. He was Jesus who they'd been with, who they trusted, who they learned from, and he was gone. And then he appears to them, and we read that in John, where he comes to them and he knew that their world was chaos. He understood that. And John says in his gospel, which we read just a little while ago, he said twice, peace be with you. Peace I give to you. And then he breathed on them. And that chaos became the infilling of the Holy Spirit. We go back to creation. God breathed and the world came into place because of his power. And now he's with these disciples whose world was all about, they didn't know, and he breathed on them. And they were filled with the Holy Spirit. But they didn't really grasp still what was happening and they gathered in Jerusalem and Matthew at the end of Matthew it tells us that Jesus said to them right this is what I want you to do I want you to go into all the world and make disciples that's what I want you to do now they knew that and because they were amazing committed wonderful people they wanted to do what Jesus wanted them to do and so here they are gathered and you can imagine the conversations. How are we going to do it? How are we going to do what Jesus wants us to do? He said, go and tell people. How are we going to tell those people out there? Last time there was a crowd, we all made idiots of ourselves. How are we going to tell those people the message of Jesus? How are we going to go into all the world? How are we going to communicate with them? How are we going to do this? So they prayed. They waited on God and they prayed and they fasted and they shared with each other. They would have shared the stories, how they saw Jesus as the Son of God talk to people. They saw Jesus heal people. They saw his power in that healing. They saw his power in his teaching and preaching. They saw his power in unconditional love. And they knew that's what Jesus wanted them to do, but they didn't know how they were going to do it. And then comes the day of Pentecost. And what happened? There was a roaring wind, like right back at creation. That same word, the wind came. And the fire came. And they knew the symbolism of fire from those stories of Elijah and Moses they knew the symbolism of that. And so the wind came and the fire came and it was like the fire sat on each of them. And suddenly they were different people. Suddenly they were on fire for Jesus. 
and he gave them the power of being able to communicate with all those people out there who had come for the Feast of the Pentecost. They came from all different places, so they had all different languages. And the Bible tells us that Peter, the one who had said, I don't know, Jesus, don't blame me, that same person, filled with the Holy Spirit, stood up and said, listen to me, guys, I've got something to tell you. And the miracle of it is that people heard in their own language and they responded. And they went out into all the world, the then known world, and they preached the gospel and they healed and they called out demons and they were Jesus. They were God in that world because the Holy Spirit came upon them. And then comes Paul. He didn't, know that, he didn't know anything about this Holy Spirit. He just knew he wanted to get rid of the disciples. But God came, met him, met him on the road, and he met Jesus. And in meeting Jesus, he became filled with the Holy Spirit. And he was able to teach the church and so teach us that the Holy Spirit can be in us. 1 Corinthians says, 1 Corinthians 3.16, Surely you know that you are God's temple and that God's spirit lives in you. And that's us, the children of God, those of us who are saved and who Jesus is our saviour. The Holy Spirit lives in us. And what can we do? Fill with the Holy Spirit, what can we do? Well, Paul also tells us in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20, to him who by means of his power working in us is able to do so much more than we can ever ask for or even think of. To him who by means of his power, of his Holy Spirit, whose coming we celebrate today, working in us, is able to do so much more than we can ever ask for or ever think of. Thank you, Ruth, for reminding us of some of those uh, Bible truths and uh, teaching us some things we never knew. Well, I started by saying Pentecost is not simply God with you, but God in you. God in you. Now, there's been a theme, hasn't there, been running through our meeting. And uh, there's a lovely song that we're going to sing together as we ask ourselves... Uh, as we ask ourselves that, um, that same question as we pray and we ask God, peace be with you as the Father sent me, I'm sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. I wonder if God's Holy Spirit has been speaking to anybody here today. I know he's been speaking to me and uh, what a blessing it's been. I wonder if we need to say, Lord, Lord, fill me with your Holy Spirit. I'm ready to receive the Holy Spirit. I knew a man once who'd been a, a Christian, a Salvationist for over 70 years and then all of a sudden had a stroke and was in hospital for quite a lot of time. And I visited him and he got better, praise the Lord. And he came back to the core and he was filled with God's Spirit in that time of um, rehabilitation. And he used to witness to his, he used to say to his wife, well, I'm different now. I was never saved before, he used to say. And she used to give him a hard time and said, of course you were. And he said, yeah, but there's something different about me now. And, and we talked about it and, and he gave his life completely over to the Lord. And it's a shame if we have to have that kind of crisis before we say, Lord, completely take all there is of me. And, uh, and yet sometimes that is the case. Let's sing this song. And if God's Holy Spirit has been speaking to you this morning, come and stand. Someone will pray with you and uh, 
and, 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 and help you to, be, uh, to walk from this place a different person filled with God's Holy Spirit today. Just the ladies, please. Just the gents. Commissioner Ivan, I wonder if you'd lead us in prayer, please, mate. Let us sing verse 3 once again. Until this earthly part of me glows with thy fire divine. May we leave this place glowing with the fire divine. The last verse, the verse 3 together. Breathe on me, breath of God. Closing song is 867. 867. I felt a new and loving touch upon my heart and soul. I felt God's love and wondrous power descend and make me whole. Let's be upstanding as we sing these lovely words together. Thank you. Felt a new and loving touch
filled us with his love. He owned his greatness, I now can comprehend the wonders of his matchless love. Now for the benediction with the assistance of the band. Thank you. <laughs>